The next thing I'd like to add to my detail is some anchor bolts. I have an anchor bolt as part of my Autodesk library, and that's what I'm going to use. This family is also included as part of the course files, so if you can't find anything suitable in your standard family library, you can use this one instead. So I'll load this family into the project, and then I can click to place the anchor bolt. If I select it, I can see that I have the option to change the size, so I think I'm going to change this to an M20. And I'll increase the dimensions as well, and I can do that either by dragging the controls graphically, or by adjusting the numbers in the properties palette. Now I want to make sure I have a 50mm edge distance, so I'll add a dimension from the edge of my base plate to the centre of my anchor bolt. And don't forget, if you want to move something by adjusting a dimension, you first need to select the thing that you want to move, and then any dimension that you can adjust is going to go small and blue. So now you can click on those dimensions and type in a new value. Once I'm happy with this, I'll mirror it to the other side. And that's my detail pretty much sorted. Now you might be wondering why I made you create detail components for things that would have been much quicker to just draw with filled regions in the project. And this is a good question, and one which catches a lot of people by surprise. It's certainly true that we could have drawn filled regions for our base plate and grout a little more quickly directly in the project environment, and it would have looked pretty much exactly the same. However, what we haven't seen yet is the advantage of using this component multiple times. When we loaded in the anchor bolt component from the library, it was certainly much, much quicker than it would have been to draw that component from scratch with lines and hatching. And if we'd already built the components for the base plate and the grout, then the time to implement these components would have been much smaller, and would certainly have been quicker than drawing the components from scratch directly in the project, even though these are quite simple components. And you will get much faster at building families as you get to know the tools better. So the next time you come to place a base plate, you won't have to draw the family again, you can just use the component that you've already created. The next benefit is the speed of your model. The more lines and hatching we draw directly in our model, the larger our model becomes and the slower it performs. In a project with only a few simple details, this might not make a huge amount of difference, but when you start adding more and more lines and filled regions directly in the project, it really will start to take its toll on your model performance. And what happens when it comes to updating? Say you wanted to change the hatch pattern for your base plates. If you've drawn 64 different base plates as different filled regions directly in your project, you'll need to select them all individually and change the style. And what happens if you miss one? Suddenly your project's going to start to look a bit messy. If instead you've drawn them as one single detail item, all you need to do is open up one component, change the family, and load it back into the project. This is much simpler and can save you a bunch of time overall. The final advantage is with keynotes. If you select the base plate and choose Edit Type, you can see that you have a keynote option. Now you can add keynotes to your detail components and you can use these to call up notes, spec codes and references. And this is what we're going to do in the final part of this module. I've added some extra keynotes to the keynote file we created earlier. You can either copy these into your file directly from the screen or you can use the updated keynote file supplied with the course files. I've added notes for the steelwork and I've also added some user notes, which we'll discuss in a minute. Once this is done, I'll save it and go back into Revit. Now I'm going to head over to the Annotate tab, I'll choose the Keynotes drop down, and I'll select the Keynote settings, and all I need to do is reload my Keynote file. If you're using a different file to the one you used earlier, you'll have to press Browse and browse to the location of your new Keynote file. Once that's loaded in, we can start adding Keynotes to our project. I'm going to select Element Keynote, and then I'll select my base plate. Now I haven't assigned a Keynote to the base plate yet, so it's going to ask me which one I want to use. So I'll select this option here, and I'm going to press OK. Now don't forget you can switch between the code and the description using the type selector. Now I'll add a keynote to the grout. This time I'm going to choose the non-shrink grout option. And finally, I'll add a keynote to the anchor bolt. Now don't forget that these keynotes are type properties, so every time we place an anchor bolt of this type in the future, we'll immediately be able to tag it with the appropriate keynote. Now what I'd like to do next is start adding some material keynotes. These work in a very similar way to the element keynotes, except that they are associated with the element materials rather than the element itself. So if I select the concrete beam, for example, I can access its material through the properties dialog box, and I'm going to press the three dots to launch the materials browser. Whenever we've been looking at materials before, we've always been concerned with the graphics tab. This time we need to look in the identity tab, and under here we have a keynote option, and if I select the three dots it will launch the keynote browser, and we can choose the appropriate keynote from the list. 
And now I'll go back to the Keynote drop-down on the Annotate tab, and this time I'm going to choose Material Keynote. And I can tag the beam with the Material Keynote. And now because I've used the same material for the concrete slab and concrete columns as well, I can tag these with the same Material Keynote immediately. I could also choose to add a Material Keynote to the steel column, and Revit will ask me which Keynote I would like to associate with this material. So I'll choose the correct option from the list, and then I'll press OK to add the note. The final type of keynotes is user keynotes. These are associated with particular elements, but purely for positioning and labelling. I can add a user keynote to the detail by selecting user keynote option from the keynotes dropdown. And then I need to select an element to associate the keynote with. So I'm going to select the column. And now I'll choose the keynote from the list. And I'm just going to choose this user note here. And it will appear on the detail with a leader to the column. Now this note is associated with this particular instance of the column and it will disappear if the column is deleted, but you wouldn't be able to automatically associate this user keynote with other columns of this type without inserting a new instance of this user keynote. This is a useful way of adding standard notes to multiple details without having to resort to adding text. The advantage being that you can be certain that the text will be the same each time it's placed. It will be free from spelling errors and mistakes, and if there are any updates that are required, these can be done once and all of the notes will be updated in one go. Now that brings us to the end of this module. This time we learnt about bracing and the view control options that we have available to us. We also learnt about adding extra components to existing structural framing families to make them behave differently in different views and at different levels of detail. We also learnt a lot about sections. We created section views and added tags, text and filled regions to add detail to our views. Then we learnt about detail items and why these are much better than lines and hatching drawn directly in the view. Then we learnt about the various different types of keynote that can be added and the benefit of using these over standard text. And finally, we learnt how to create a keynote file and how to use all of these different keynote types.